You should take a look. Thank you very much, Watson. Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. As you can see, it's raining outside. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. And it ended the same as last time when I stopped uh, Mara's gameplay. Uh, Watson is still telling me about the letter, so we just have to take a look at that to start the new case. We will have to examine. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. In a minute. Okay, let's get started. Where is Toby? There is Toby. Let's talk to Toby. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's coat. The letter is on the table, Holmes. <sighs> you should take a look. All right. Let's take a look at the letter. Uh, what table? Which table? This one over here. Okay. So let's see what's the fourth um, case. So we have biggest three Sherlock Holmes. We have the wax seal. A wax seal with the monogram E B. Okay. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. Haven't heard of Brackenstall. Okay. Let's open it up. How can I open up the letter? What's here? I, I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. Really? It looks beautiful. <laughs> okay, Inspector's letter. Abbey Grange, Marsham, Kent. My dear Mr. Holmes. I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be a most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept exactly as I have found it. But I beg you not to lose an instant, as it is difficult to leave Sir. Eustace? I don't know. There. Yours faithful, Inspector Lestrade. Okay, we have a dead body, and it's a, it's a woman. That's our first little clue. Okay. Um... All right. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? Really, it's Eustace. I should okay. say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. Mm -hmm. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Okay. This boots are really loud. <laughs> Alright, we have to go to Abbey Grange and investigate the murder at the Abbey Grange. Let's say goodbye to Toby, and then let's go. I agree with you, Toby. Okay, it's still the same, nothing new. All right, maybe not. The this is where I keep my post. Okay, no echoes. Okay, let's go to Abbey Grange. It's funny. Sometimes he has his own casebook with him, with all the clues and so on. And sometimes it's um, and punishment by Tolstoy. Okay, new location. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. Okay. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. 
They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Okay, so inspect the room where Lady Brackenstall is resting. That's our next. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Well, let's take a look. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Mm hmm. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. Who's the one in the middle? Lestrade, could you just leave the room so I could just take a look at the picture? Wait for it. Put it back. There it is. Come on. Why can't I? It's Lord now. Brigham Brackenstall. <laughs> this name is so funny. Baron Linden Brackenstall. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's go. There she is. Ladies. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Okay. Let's take a look at her. She's pink eye. Mm -hmm. Fresh bruises. Was, there was something here. Pale cheeks. Okay. What else do we have? The brush. Kangaroo and emu, Australian origin. Alright. Elegant dress. The wedding ring, okay. Old bruises. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. So why did you do it? Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Okay. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Okay. Did these three villains steal anything? 
Yes, I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. Okay. Your ladyship. All right, I need to talk to him later on. Let's go around the room, talk to this one. Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. Right, she looks peculiar. Wrinkles. Mm -hmm. Something about the clothes, maybe? Okay, nothing yet. Nothing yet. There's blood or something. Handkerchief, vinegar smell, resuscitation, carrying. Coffee stain. And working hands. Mm -hmm. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Okay. It's not much, but... At least you told. What do we have here? Newspaper. The Times. Randall Gang's Burglary. Family business becoming the... Uh, family business booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, this inf infamous family of burglars, the Randalls as they are known, made their reappearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the wealthiest homes in Sydenham. The police are already on their trail. However, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including that of the name of the victim. A witness was able to provide precise description of all three men, and this w will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We will take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band and to provide the full description as it is available at this moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable time, being a family of three, a father and his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his forties and already grey-haired, while of average height and, height and build. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are close in age, but very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered, with a small, disproportionate head. The younger brother, Melvin Randall, is of a somewhat weaker constitution and is as skinny, as skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert, and may your valuables stay safe. Okay, what we have here, we have bruises. Okay, let's look at the mirror, let's pick the room where Lady Brackenstall is resting, let's pick the crime scene in the dining room. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Yeah, maybe she just told about it. She just told the story like in the article, and it was someone else, or she hired someone, or... What else? Okay. This picture. A trapper's hut. Hmm. Scratches. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. I can move this. There's a safe. Okay. Uh, this go. is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Mm-hmm. In a bit. Okay, a small table. What do we have this here? photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Okay. Rock of Gibraltar, Adelaide, 1893. So she is from. Australia. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Okay. Just, just roll the picture. Why not? <laughs> keep it for, keep it for yourself. All right. What else do we have? Something. 
Okay. I talk to her. Spot pictures. Do we have something in the back here? No. Alright, let's talk to her again. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have hmm. to open it. Okay. So I need to... Your ladyship? need to find a way to open it. My mistress is very tired. Can't you allow her to her room? Yeah, in a bit. Ah, wrong button. Um, photograph. Character portrait. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see which clues we already have. Alright, first one. The robbery was faked and the whole story invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the Randalls, or the testimonies and evidence match and point to the Randall gang. Um, at the moment it's like this, but I'm sure it will be like this. In a way. Let's see. next on the agenda. Still need to inspect the room, yeah, of course, because I uh, can't take a look at the uh, safe yet. Inspect the crime scene in the dining room. We will do this shortly. Let us try to open this safe. Let's see if I can open it in a way. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. Okay. Not yet. Don't hear anything different. Ah, there it was. There. Fifteen. Okay. didn't work the first time around. Now we have to take a look at the second. There was something. Here. Okay, and one more time. Perfect. This was way too easy. Bunch of money. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. Hmm. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Okay, that's a medical report. We'll take a look at this in a sec. Oh, yeah, that's a medical report. All right, what's here? Sir Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several sites of a hepatic decomp decompensation. The last time that we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow. There is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. Yeah, I, th I thought so, it's liver damage. Then there are the lung abs abscesses that, have, that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by an an alteration to the nervous system which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol that includes the tremors your liver seemed excessively hard at the time of your examination which is a sign of an evolving cirrhosis there are also signs of 
ascites, a fluid in the peritoneal cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancreati pancreati pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I am available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. Okay, so he was really, really sick. Okay, we have to talk to her again, of course. Okay. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. No, not okay. Teresa, let's talk to her. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. I'm... Now I'm convinced that, the, that she is the one who killed the man. I think he hit her again. That's why she has a pink eye. And she killed him because of that. That's what I think at the moment. I'm not sure if this is really going to be um, the the case, but uh, let's see. Okay, no acquaintance. Lady Brackenstone married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during at the during that time. There is little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, I think she's acquainted. <laughs> Somehow. But this is just one little clue. Oh, let's see if there's something else I missed. No. Alright, we, we've done this one. Let's go over here and inspect the crime scene in the dining room. Alright, let's go out. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should. In a, in a minute. Let's, let's take a look. Ooh, this is cool. It's a direct way to the garden. A trapper's hut. Okay. A trapper's hut. Okay. Something else? No. Right, what else do we have here? A hunter's cabin. The hunting scene. Mm -hmm. Hunting pictures. Hunting Antique weapons. hunting weapons. Can't take a look at this picture. This is irrelevant. The clock is irrelevant. The hunting scene. Ooh, a lot of broken dishes. Okay. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. Okay. What is missing? A bottle of wine is missing here. Yeah, maybe he was drunk. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. Yeah. That's that's what I've been thinking. It was just staged to look like a robbery. Something else in this. this An empty uh, silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. But actually it would be way, way easier The criminals just... did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. Yeah, um, and it would be way easier to grab the whole case and go instead of just emptying it and taking all the stuff because it would be too loud to walk around with. Uh, 
Your pants full of silver. A deer hunt. That's why I think it's staged. There's the body. Let's take a look at the table. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. Mm -hmm. There is bees wing at the bottom. As if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. Yeah. So we have a decanter, but it wasn't decanted. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. Okay. This glass has some wine traces. Okay, just one It is glass. rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. Hmm, this is really strange. So it would mean that he decanted just a, a part of the wine for those two glasses and someone else put in himself, a, uh, put himself another glass. So it was just two persons at the beginning and a third person came afterwards, I think. Chateau Calon Ségur, French wine, Grand Cru. Yeah, that's the wine that's missing from the cupboard. Um, why are you telling me to press R1? Ooh! Mantelpiece? Ah, okay. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Alright. A fur trader's cabin. Huh? Okay, let's let's examine the body. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. Okay. That must be the murder weapon. Hmm. The poker. Okay, what do we have here? Quite stick. a large stick. A formidable weapon. Okay. Ooh, the head wood. was cracked with the force of the blow. Ouch. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Okay. Yeah. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now before we take a look at our clues, let's take a Ooh. Now that I know that, I can expect... A fur trader's cabin. Okay. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Oh, okay. Let's take a look. What we got? Two glasses. A glass with B-swing. Okay. There were three people drinking wine out of these glasses. One of the three probably prefers wine with bee swing. There were two people drinking wine out of the glasses. The remaining glass with the bee swing consisted solely of the dregs from the other two glasses. What? Ah, okay. Hmm. Let's assume this one first. Ooh. Then it was the gang, actually. Really? I think so. Okay, let's let's say it wasn't the Randalls, and let's say it was just two people. Okay, let's see what else. The poker, maybe the fireplace? No. Nope. Dead body. Um, what else? The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to a poker blow. Yes, 
Seems like it. Seems very really obvious. What else? Or... Ah, the desert uh, could have been a Pokemon. The desert so useless could have been due to his accidentally striking his head on a fireplace grate. Okay, so it could have been an accident. But why? Let's assume this one. Okay, this one is wrong. Then it should be this one. If we're, if, if we're now going to blame the Randall gang. It's not helping me. Three people? No. Okay. Um, let's say it's an accident. Wait, that's the wrong one. Mm, nah. Let's keep it like this for the moment. Um, wait. I think there were more clues, actually. No, no they're not. Okay. Alright. Okay, something is still missing. I haven't inspected everything here. Otherwise, this would be already... ...done. What am I missing? Can't go there. Body already. The death was instant. Yeah. I know. Um. Okay. Let's go through here and take a look outside. Like there's nothing here for me. Importance. No. Let's get inside. Oh, I'm here again. Um. Okay. Ah, that wasn't at all. Right. Took this rod. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. Mm. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Okay. So... we have here. So Eustace was violent towards his wife. Yeah, we know that. That one is, um, is a no-brainer. Yeah, the criminals, I don't think that they are identified at the moment. So something is still missing in there, but let's see if I can talk to her again. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. She's so lying. Your ladyship? I'm so sure she's lying. 
Please leave my. Yeah. So sure that she's lying. That's right. What are you doing here? Have you found any interesting clues yet, Mr. Holmes? Some. But not all. Something is still missing here. Oops. Just happened. What am I missing? Wait. Hunting rifles. I got those pictures. Something is still missing. Three glasses. Well, let's take a look at the clues we already got. Mm, there's nothing I can use. Medical report, he was really. Mm. Hmm. Oh, this one, the chair with the rope. Maybe she wasn't lying. Let's see. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. <gasps> I will take it with me. Yay! Let's go to Toby. Go find Toby. Yeah, of course. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. But this rope is from this one, from the bell rope. <coughs> So, let's go and find Toby first. I'm still thinking it's in such a Ach, Dostoevsky, not Tolstoy. Dostoevsky. All right. Toby, my dear little dog. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Yay. I agree with you, Toby, that... Let's go. It's still the fat lady? Yeah, it's still the fat lady. I don't know why it's pointed at her. Maybe sometime... Um... Maybe a possibility to... Um, there would be a clue why. Let us see how the rope was cut. Okay. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. So Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. Uh, okay. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Yeah. Nice. If I cut the rope with a yeah. knife, it matches the original. Okay. So now we know it was cut with a knife. Sharp knife. Another rope. Sailor background. The rope was cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly in sailor's knots. That could indicate that the intruder had a sailor's background. Hmm, maybe one of her family members or something. He's, he's acquainted with a sailor. Alright. We need Toby, we got Toby. Let's go back to Abbey Grange. Did I miss anything in my clues? No, it's to the criminals. <laughs> Who's a good boy? It's Toby. <coughs> Search, Toby. Search. Am I now? I am the dog? Really? This is this is cool. What am I? What am I looking for? Ah, 
Ah, there's a scent. Ah, oh, okay. I saw it. I saw it. Let me go through. Now I need to go outside. Okay. No! No! Oh, Sherlock! This is so cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. I thought so in the little shark back there. Or is it a greenhouse? It's a shark here. The intruders oh. entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Yeah, it's just hidden there, that's what I think. Um, okay. Do I have to follow this one again? Uh, it's leading me back. Why? I think that's not the intention, is it? Let's go back there. Ah, it's leading around. Ah, okay. Somewhere here. This is really cool. That's a nice feature. Well, no! The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Mm. Okay, now we have the well. We got this one. What else? Ah, it still goes on. And then they went to the gate. Probably. No? Here? The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The okay. criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Mm -hmm. Okay, Toby. Brave Toby, the best nose in the <laughs> British Empire. Ah, uh, the stuff. Alright, let's start with the shit. Alright, we have a hook. This hook might be useful. I'm not sure for what, but uh, okay. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Alright. Small gardening tools, nothing of great interest. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. Alright. Yeah, and in those bags there will be the silverware, and the silverware will be down in the well. One of that. Yeah. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Remove the bucket. Touch the hook. Marks. It's the silverware, like I told you before. Silverware? This is hardly a coincidence. Yeah. <clears throat> the Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Stolen? It's to be in. Uh <laughs> Silverware and criminals. Right. Robbie is confirmed as a motive for the crime. The crime criminals may have plans to return for the silverware they, they dumped. I don't think so. The Robbie could have been imitated to explain Sir Eustace's death. The silverware was not supposed to be found. I think it's that. Yeah. Murderous. Visitor, Sir Eustace was murdered by the by the one by the one by the one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He is tall and strong, and he is a sailor, and probably, in any way, connected to her familiarly. 
Yeah, the person who was visiting the night was probably a sailor, yeah. I'm so sure. Search for sailor suspects. Okay. Let's get back. Ah, no. Before we go back, let's take a look at the wall. Maybe we can find a clue there as well. Toby is still here. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. Okay. Bray. All right, let's get back to the boat, uh, to the missus and um, a servant. And talk to the strat, of course. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, hmm? isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps oh. it was used as a temporary hiding place, or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Hmm. Okay. Ladies, what did you do? We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? Okay, that's what it is. Let's talk to her. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Okay, um, what are we up here? Ah, I'm so sorry, okay, see, yes, sure. I need to get back to this, that's a possible sailor suspect. All right, oh, could have been here all along. Let's go to Baker Street. Let's search for more intel. Lady Brackenstall and her maid's voyage from Australia. Okay, this is research. I need to research newspapers. This looks much better. 1893. Um, Rock of Gibraltar's arrival. Right off the Rock of Gibraltar, a ship returned. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide Southampton London line. Connor Building, James Street, London, has returned from a six-month voyage through India, New Zealand, and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of the Fraser family, owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Ha! Huh. Okay. Here it is. Hmm. So maybe I was wrong. Task for Wiggins. The address of the Rock of Gibraltar ship owner. We can find the crew list there. I forgot who Wiggins is. <laughs> the shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line. And its address. Oh, okay, Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. Uh, Gibraltar I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland city. Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. I call in who? Who's the specialist? Wiggins, yeah. Ah, isn't Wiggins one of the little fellas? Still? Yeah. One of us. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? <laughs> he just left it on the ground. 
at your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. What is a guinea? I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Hmm. Three hours later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. And why Put is it that? on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Uh, what, ta what table? Once again, what? Up there. <clears throat> this list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. What? Uh, I don't know if this is this wrong? January 28th is also wrong. November 10th. This could be possible. I do not think that this sailor no. has any connection to the case. I didn't want to press X there. So. Crocker. We have, have Charles, Jack, Henry, Ernest, Thomas, Herbert, William. Frank. George. Peter Davis and Senior. Jack Crocker. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. No. Okay. Let's take a look at the, the next page. Departure from Adelaide, October 23rd, arrival in London, March 2nd. No, that's not it. November 12th, also wrong. October 17th. It's just the one page. But is there anyone missing? Did I miss someone? We have Jack Crocker. Daniel, Peter, Neil, George, Frank, Nero Cooper. I, th I think I missed something. This no? list shows this. Yeah, 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 I know this one. Um. Yeah, but Whittington is here. This officer is still at sea, therefore he ah. cannot be involved. Okay, I have to find every name on the list. Thomas Walker. This officer is still at sea. Yeah, yeah. Ernest Henry. Uh, chill, chill, Southward, Woody, and Partridge. Southward? This officer is still at Woody. This off. Chill and Partridge is still missing. Partridge is here. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He. And now we need to just put Chill as well. This officer. Yeah. So Captain Jack Crocker yeah, is course. our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. All right. Mm, nice. Um, call Crocker to confront him. This Crocker, do you think? It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Okay. Um, if we talk to him, let's take a look at you. Acquainted with a sailor. Yeah, she's acquainted. She doesn't know anyone and yeah. 
That's all good. It's all good in the hood. Right. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Holmes. Sometime later. Mr. Holmes, mm. I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. Okay. Let's take a look at this man. Let's take a look at the hat first. Nothing. Nothing. There's something. Clear look. Honest. Okay. So it seems like he has nothing to hide. There's nothing in his beard. Strong build, yeah, of course. Something's down his arm. Bruises. Oh, did he broke his finger. Why can't I? There needs to be something here. I'm really sure of it. Hmm. Dirty trousers. Newspaper ink. Okay. Clean boots. Okay. Do I see sea knife or something? Something with a knife, I think. Ah, there it is. Sea knife. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! Okay. You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You... and what do you know? <clears throat> that evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right if... Okay, just for a moment. I think he is, really, he is right. Sharkham was right because I think he and the missus were drinking the wine. And um, at some point, her husband woke up, dressed as fast as he could. That's why he wasn't wearing any shoes or socks or something like this went downstairs, caught them both off guard, um, they had a spat, she, she, he punched her in the face and the other guy killed the killed her husband. That's what I think. There was no evidence. What then? Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Mm-hmm. Oh, do the sailor's sails knot? Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your That's theory correct. is flawed anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the shark. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? Mm -hmm. It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. Okay. I'm sure that he can. Mm -hmm. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. <sighs> Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? Mm. No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, yeah, and there will be no way to check. Yeah. So, what then? 
So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Already? Okay. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. It was him. Definitely. Of course it was him. Statement. Let's take a look here. Crocker is lying, his weapon is clear. He appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him, thus signaling his guilt. Cam Crocker was aboard the sharp on the night of the murder. He was not afraid to confront me. He had a confident demeanor. Now I think I think it's him. Alright, the captain is a killer. Or, let's see what happens if I take this one. Yeah, it's inconclusive with all the other stuff. It has to be him, definitely. Think about the, the knife and all of the stuff. It was him. Let's finish this one. Okay. So Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting the knight. The murderer is tall and agile and a high-ranking sailor. Arrest Captain Crocker. Cr Jack Crocker is a murderer and you will bring him and his accomplice Lady Reconstruct to justice. Or absolve Captain Crocker. The murder was committed in self-defense. Jack Crocker defended a woman against a violent and dis... that... dips... dipsomniacal man. The mystery is solved, but you decide to keep it secret. There's no need to inform the police. I think it was self-defense. I think it was self-defense. Yeah, that's that's my conclusion. Let's take this one. Yeah. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Again? Right away! Barely an hour has passed. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? Why did you come? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailor's knots. And not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. The music in the background. It's office. true. Ooh. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her, for I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid, who told me everything, I was insane with rage. Shit. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Okay. Now it is time to end this. What the hell? Close one. Please forgive me, Captain Crocker. I wished only to test your sincerity, and your words and deeds have far exceeded my expectations. See here, Captain Crocker, we'll do this in due form of law. You are the prisoner. Watson, you are a British jury. <laughs> Captain Crocker, the evidence shows that you acted without premeditation and used reasonable force to protect an innocent victim from her husband's brutality. Mm -hmm. Your devotion pushed you to attempt to kill yourself in order to protect the one you love. Now, what say you, gentlemen of the jury? Not guilty, my lord. <laughs> vox populi, vox dei. You are acquitted, Captain Crocker. So long as the law does not find some other victim, you are safe from me. Mr. Holmes. It is a great responsibility that I take upon myself, but I will give Lestrade an excellent lead and... If he can't avail himself of it, I can do no more. Come back to your lady in a year, and may her future and yours 
justify us in the judgment which we have pronounced this night. All right. Inspector, I'm afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. Okay. I accept the decision, definitely. The Abbey Grange Affair. Sir Eustace was murdered by Captain Jack Crocker, who was visiting Lady Brackenstall that night. They staged it as a robbery by the Randall gang. Crocker used his sea knife to cut the bell rope to tie the lady and then hit the silverware in the well. Jack Crocker defended a woman against a violent and dipsomaniacal man. We have decided to keep it a secret. Yeah. I accept this one. Yeah. Commiserative. Okay. Whatever that means. This one was a pretty short, a uh, pretty short um, case. The last one was rather large. But okay, that's the way it is. The Kew Gardens drama. So this will be the next one, which we will have to tackle. <laughs> Let's take a glimpse. Holmes, for heaven's sake, whatever is going on? Oh, hello, Watson. You're early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Holmes, where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. <laughs> Ridiculous and dangerous. They're domestic bees. Apis mellifera. Such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment. A theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well... I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, how ever did you guess? <laughs> For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on, admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. Very nice. Um, not yet. Hopefully Watson won't talk into my outro again. Alright. Um, so guys, thank you guys for watching. This was a really short uh, fourth case. So the fifth one is already uh, on. And we will take a look at this one later on. Alright. Uh, I hope to see you guys later when I'm back with Sherlock Holmes or even 303 Freestyle. And until then, I hope to see you guys. Bye-bye.